As schools across the country focus more and more on STEM instruction, one teaching method is gaining traction as educators try to help students make sense of complex science and math topics. Reporter Andrea Vasquez has the story. As a high school physics student, Seth Gunyal's Kupperman enjoyed the subject, but not the way it was taught. I was kind of frustrated. I don't just want to watch my physics teacher do physics in front of us. I want to do some physics. Can we do some physics, please? Now a teacher at a math and science-focused high school, Gunyal's Kupperman found the antidote in modeling instruction, an approach to teaching that relies less on lectures and textbooks and more on students' hands-on experiments. Instead of having students kind of quietly do work cloistered by themselves, they're conversing, they're deducing, they're problem solving, they're sharing. It really moves us to be learners together uh, rather than just kind of passive receivers of knowledge. The United States ranks 25th in mathematics and 17th in science among industrialized nations, a standing the Obama administration calls unacceptable. Gunyal's Kupperman is among a growing number of educators who think modeling instruction can help change that. He and teachers from around the country and across the world gave up three weeks this summer to attend one of the workshops that the American Modeling Teachers Association helped put on in 20 states and three countries. About 10 percent of the physics teachers in the country have gone through a modeling workshop and a fair fraction of the chemistry teachers. There are probably well over 1,700 teachers that are members of the American Modeling Teachers Association, and its membership curve is going up pretty steeply. From 2010 to 2020, the U.S. Department of Education projects double-digit increases in the number of STEM jobs, but it reports that only 16 percent of high school seniors are proficient in math and interested in a STEM career. Seeing the growing need, science educators developed modeling instruction, and the American Modeling Teachers Association was formed to train teachers to bring it into their classrooms. The method aims to help students essentially do science rather than memorize facts. We collect evidence, we analyze it, we see some patterns in it. Can we use these patterns to come up with some kind of model and then we can use it to predict other situations. We're trying to recreate that experience all the time in what we do in the classroom so that the kids see science not just as a body of facts and figures but as a human intellectual endeavor that's a creative process of building models and thinking about how does the world work and how do we best represent and communicate how the world works. And too often our science education misses out on that. With this method, teachers push students to develop a model and to answer a question. Students then experiment with their models and record the data. And the fact that they could use diagrams um, or maybe a graph to do something instead of equations, that, that helped a lot of the kids with the varying math abilities. Like a test question might say you can use equations or you can use the graph. It really reaches different learning styles that way. After making sense of their discoveries, the budding scientists present and discuss the results with their classmates. Although instructors guide students, modeling instruction flips the traditional teacher-student dynamic, and that can take some getting used to for everyone. We as teachers get so caught up in just we want to make sure that the students understand everything so we tell them and tell them and tell them over and over again but really the people who understand are always the people doing the talking so if we want students to understand we need to ask them to start doing the talking. It's no longer memorizing a body of facts it's actually doing science. I mean I heard them a couple of times can't we just have something to memorize can't we just have a worksheet I said nope that's not how it works and it was a little bit of a learning curve at, at first and then um, from there it just they, they really kind of got into it a lot more. From Oregon to Rhode Island there's a growing list of states adopting the next generation science standards a new set of benchmarks that reform science education and those leading the way in modeling instruction say the approach fits right in with the new focus on teaching students to think like scientists. When students feel as though they're going through those same experiments and they're reaching conclusions that these great scientists have made, that's what the most empowering part of modeling is because they feel as though they're coming up with these models and making 
achievements and like discoveries for themselves. As modeling instruction infiltrates more classrooms, teachers are pushing to raise their students' engagement in STEM and ultimately create a more competitive workforce for the future. We're trying to engage students in 21st century science that really in involves knowing enough foundation of science and enough ability to continue to learn science. Having students leave high school valuing and appreciating science is going to be extremely important to how open-minded they will be to, to become more educated about policy decisions or in jobs and just open-minded and not fearful of the science that is integrated with every uh, you know, profession that we have nowadays. For more on modeling methods, check out the links on our website, including a link to a roundtable conversation about the topic as part of American Graduate Day, public media's initiative on finding solutions to the high school dropout crisis.